Hi everyone, I'm Chef Jennifer Basil and we are focusing on Italian American classics. Today we're going to do chicken cacciatore, which is actually done in Italy and here. And we're gonna do a crostata. Two different versions though. It's different in Italy than the one we do here. So stay tuned and we'll get to those recipes. We are making chicken cacciatore for our first recipe today. It is a lovely chicken dish, and what I like about this is the, all the vegetables that go in it. It's a nice earthy, it's a light dish, but still gives a lot of depth to it. So I'm excited to share it with you. We're gonna start over at the stove browning our chicken. Let's get started. We're back here at the stove top, and our first step is gonna be getting this chicken browned. If you've watched my previous episodes, you know that I always tell you to get your pan hot before you put your oil or butter in, that way you don't cause a fire. And we've got that started, so a little bit of olive oil. I like to put butter in it because the butter will brown and that gives you a nice brown color on your chicken. So I've got salt and pepper seasoned flour here. We're using chicken thighs and chicken breasts. I've cut the chicken breasts to about the same size as the chicken thighs so that everything cooks evenly and we don't have to worry about putting the boned in chicken thighs in first and then waiting 20 minutes and then putting chicken breasts in. This is a one pot dish, super easy, but we've cut everything so that they're the same size. So let's get each piece breaded. Let me put that butter in since I just mentioned it. And I'm gonna turn my temperature down because you can see that smoking. Yes, love that sizzle. So seasoned flour with salt and pepper. We'll get all those pieces coated and in the pan. We'll let them get a brown crust on. They're not gonna cook all the way through. We are just getting a golden color on it. And then we're gonna take it out. We are gonna make our lovely hearty vegetable sauce. And then we'll add the chicken back in and finish it simmering on the stove so all those flavors will come together. Look at that gorgeous color we got on this chicken. And because we put some flour on it, that's gonna actually help to give our sauce a little thickness when we start to make it. So let's get those pieces out of the cast iron pan. And again, these aren't cooked all the way through. And I've turned the temperature down just a little bit. Let's uh, go ahead and saute our vegetables. I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil because the flour soaked up some of that oil and butter. So just to make sure we still have that nonstick coating. And I've got onion, red pepper, and garlic that we'll start with. And you know me, I like to start with something in the pan before I put that garlic in because garlic can burn so quickly. And once it does, it's very bitter. If that happens to you, Take your pan off the heat, take your paper towel, wipe it out, start over. It's okay, it's not gonna ruin your dish. If you burn garlic, you can just start over, it's fine. Okay, and garlic, as I'm talking about it. Put that in there. We'll let that soften up a little bit. Oh my gosh, it already smells so good. So this dish, cacciatore, actually means hunter. So this is kind of like a what that you would call like a hunter's dish. And there's kind of like a story, if you research it, people say that this dish was developed in Italy during the Renaissance. That is not actually possible because during the Renaissance, we hadn't started trading back and forth. And so ingredients like the peppers or the tomatoes were not available back then. There may have been a dish similar to this that was called cacciatore, but I don't think peppers or tomatoes had, would have been in that dish. They probably just used what they had available. They gathered from around. So the addition of the tomatoes and the peppers is definitely an Italian American take on this dish. All right, now that that's going, let's add in our mushrooms. And the mushrooms are gonna add such an earthiness to this dish. Really makes you think earthy, hunter. This dish, I don't think we serve it a lot here in America with rabbit, but in Italy they do. So chicken or rabbit, let that kind of combine a little bit. Your mushrooms are gonna release a little bit of liquid and that's okay. We can deglaze with 
white wine. Should I take a sip? I'm just kidding, I like red wine better. So we'll deglaze with the white wine. Let the flavors of that wine incorporate into the dish. But we want to cook a little bit of that alcohol off. And because it's not a lot, it, it does burn off fairly quickly. We are going to add chicken stock. We are going to add diced tomatoes. And if it's tomato season, find the ripest tomatoes and dice them yourself. It would just add such a beautiful um, organic flavor to this dish instead of using canned. But certainly during non-tomato season, use a canned product because they're just as good. The longer you cook them, the less they'll taste like a tin can. Not that we use tin anymore, but you know what I mean. Okay, let's season it. I've got oregano. I've got basil, my favorite herb, I wonder why. A Little bit of salt. And pepper. And let's bring that up to a low simmer. So I'm gonna raise the heat a little bit. And we're gonna put the chicken back in. Because remember, all we did was get the chicken golden. It's not cooked all the way through. And by putting the chicken back into, the chicken's gonna start to absorb all the flavors of the dish, the tomato, the peppers, the mushrooms. And then, ooh, let's get some of that juice in there too, because that's gonna add flavor. This just needs to cook for about 20 minutes until your chicken's cooked all the way through. I like to cover it so that I don't have all that juice evaporate because you do want this to be somewhat of a saucy dish. Because I'm using such a large cast iron, I'm just gonna take some aluminum foil which will help some of that liquid not evaporate out. But certainly if you're using a sautan that has a matching lid, do it that way. This will be done in about 20 minutes. Okay. It's ready to serve. So I'm gonna take my makeshift lid off. Oh, I wish you could smell the aroma of the basil, the oregano, the mushrooms, so good. Look at that, nice and hot. Can be served by itself. Again, this would be nice with a side of mashed potatoes or polenta. Let's take a couple of these pieces of chicken. Maybe a chicken breast and a chicken thigh. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. And now I want to get all that juice. All those vegetables. With that great earthy flavor. You can serve this family style or plate it individually. Great fall dish. Look at how pretty. I put some basil here on the side. Let's chiffonade some basil just to kind of sprinkle on top get a little bit more color. So to chiffonade, we are gonna take basil leaves and you just layer them, one on top of the other. We're gonna roll those up, kinda like a cigar. And then as fine as you can chop it, you're gonna make just little tiny ribbons. Kinda let those come apart. Sprinkle a little, little on top. And then let's garnish it with a little more basil. That is your chicken cacciatore. You asked for more dessert, so we're gonna make another dessert recipe. We are going to do crostata today. Now, what's interesting, we've been focusing on Italian and American classics. The crostata you get in Italy is different than you one you get in America, or what we think of as a crostata. So we're gonna do it two ways today. To start, we are gonna do the way you get it in Italy. So we are gonna take a food processor, we're gonna add flour. I was smart and wore a light colored dress today. So whenever you make a pie dough of any kind, tart dough, pie dough, you wanna make sure that you have cold butter because that's gonna add some fluffiness and that layery flakiness to your crust. So we've got that. We're gonna put in, actually I'm gonna pulse this a little bit together first and then we're gonna add our sugar and butter and egg. So I'm just gonna pulse and kinda of get that mixed together. If you don't have a food processor, you could use a pie cutter and kind of cut in your butter and flour. That's how my mama used to do it. 
And then she started using the pie cutter to slice cran canned cranberry sauce at Thanksgiving. Don't ask me why. It does make nice slices. All right, so we've got that pulse mixed together. Let's add our sugar. We're gonna add some egg yolks and one whole egg. We're gonna combine this in the food processor until it comes together into kind of a crumbly like dough. Pulsing it just kind of helps it incorporate so you don't have like it get stuck in one side of your food processor. Let's make sure we just get it one more good mix. Now we're gonna take this out. We are going to put it in a tart pan. So a tart pan is lovely because you'll get that pretty scalloped edge, but to take your tart out, that bottom lifts right off of it, and then your tart will sit on this. So if you don't have one, I would suggest investing in these. I'm not a big baker, but even I have one of these at home. So let's put our crumbly tart dough in the bottom. And we're gonna press it down and up to the sides. And once you have that spread all around the bottom, we're gonna bake this off for about 15 or 20 minutes. Let it set and kind of get fluffy. And then we'll put our filling in it. While this is baking, let's move on to the American version of a crostata. All right, that's ready to go in the oven. Okay, for the American version of a crostata, we've got regular pie dough. And I'm gonna just flour my counter surface a little bit so it doesn't stick. And we're just gonna roll this out. This is more of a rustic version than what you would find in Italy. Italy is more of a tart. Both are gonna be filled with a jam-like filling, typically of fruit. And this doesn't have to be perfectly round. That's kind of the point of it being rustic. Beautiful. I'm gonna put this on a baking sheet. We'll go over to the stove top. We'll get our filling for this ready while our other tart is baking. And then we can put them both together. It almost looks like the state of Texas. <laughs> Let's go get our filling ready. So for our American version of the crostata, we're gonna do a pear filling. I've already sliced pears. I have this in a little bit of cold water with some lemon juice just so they didn't turn brown and oxidize, but we're not gonna add that liquid to this. So for our filling, we are gonna take the pears. I've got some pear marstata, um, which is like a pear jam. You could use, if you can't find pear, you could use grape jelly, like a white grape jelly would not pair nice with this. We'll get our pears in there. We're gonna add our jam. We wanna make sure, because the pears are gonna release some moisture in this um, as it bakes, that we make sure that it doesn't get watery. So we're gonna add some cornstarch, which will help thicken as it cooks. And I'm using almost ripe pears. They're not very mushy. Um, but they're not unripe either. We're gonna add some sugar, cinnamon, and lemon, lemon zest. Nice grape flavor. We're gonna mix that up and let that cornstarch kind of thicken. Okay, now that that's thickened, we can take it over, put it in our pie dough. Our tart dough should be almost done. And we'll get that in the oven, take the other one out, and finish our desserts off. All right, let's get our filling in our rustic Americana crostata. Got that nice pear mixture. You can be fancy and really like put these in a fan, kind of layer them out, or just keep that rustic feel. We wanna get that filled with your pears. And all we're gonna do is fold up the edges And then let's spread it with some egg wash and put it in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes. 
You've already kind of created a thick mixture for the filling, so there's not much to cook inside. We really just want to get that pie crust cooked. And I've got our other tart, the Italian version, out of the oven. It's cooling. Let's put this in the oven and get that one filled. So our Italian version of a crostata is done. I've let this cool on the stove top before we fill it. One, because we don't want our jam to melt. And two, we want to be able to take this out. So remember I told you we used that tart pan? You're just going to pop the edge out. We're going to put that on a plate. I found some sour cherry and some sweet cherry jam. So whatever local jam you can find that's in season would probably be the best to use for this. And we're just going to uh, fill this up with that jam. Okay, we have a beautiful Italian styled crostata and what we think of as a crostata here in America. Similarities, they're both a pie dough, although different pie doughs, and they're both fruit filled. This is more of a tart shortbread kind of dough and this is more of your traditional pie dough in a rustic form. I hope you enjoyed those recipes. Let's have a taste and some wine because you know me, I love to have my wine. I'm going to take a bite from that one because that plate's too pretty. Mmm, so good. I hope you enjoyed these recipes as much as I did. And you guys, you're making me better at dessert, so thank you for that. If you want those recipes and others, you can find those on my website, jenniferbasil.com. And please follow me on social media. Ciao.